Hey guys, I'm here. We are back for the breakdown for episode two of Obi-Wan Kenobi over at New Rockstars. Eric Voss is going to lead us through his Easter eggs and details we might have missed during the second episode of the Star Wars series that started this weekend. Thanks to Star Wars Celebration, we got an early viewing for the first two episodes and it was, for me, a thrilling ride. I really thoroughly enjoyed both episodes and my reactions to each are on the channel currently. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out. And if you're not subscribed to New Rockstars yet, go check them out. So let's go ahead and hop on into the breakdown. Here we go. Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of Obi-Wan Kenobi episode two. Let's break down all the details you missed from how Reva knew Vader was Anakin, why the Grand Inquisitor isn't dead, and did Mark Hamill show up in this episode? We open on Dayu. The hell? Obi-Wan <laughs> Starliner arrives through the thick green murk of the planet. Dayu is a new planet to Star Wars, and the arrivals and departure board, as all the signs are in this episode, are in the language of Orbesh. In this case, most of the words reading Starliner with various different numbers, and that's Nations. Further back behind Obi-Wan, as he walks off the liner, written in blue, is a sign that reads machinery and radar maintenance, I, I think. I'm gonna try to translate all these. The deck officer tells Obi-Wan, You're in Dayu now. All signals in or out are blocked. People like their secrets out here. Now the show's designers say they base Dayu on the city of Hong Kong. Maybe a little commentary here about how uh, these days, mm. connectivity's a bit jammed in that part of the world. The wide street shot shows more Orabesh, Interesting. Gungan snacks, bank huh. and milk. We know from Gungan that snacks. Kids like Jar Jar love to snack. Then he comes across this familiar face. Yeah. Help a veteran get a warm meal. Yes, this is Tamar Morrison as a clone trooper, but this is not Rex. This guy's blue armor makes him a member of the 501st, and Rex broke off with Ahsoka to form the 332nd, who painted their helmets orange to honor her. Now, there are not many clone troopers left ever since Tarkin decommissioned them, as we saw during Bad Batch. This clone trooper may have been part of that massacre of the Jedi Temple, and now just feels broken and depressed, racked with guilt. Or maybe he's a clone trooper who defected from that mission <coughs> and was ostracized. Either way, give this guy a miniseries. I want to know his story. Obi-Wan eyes him apprehensively Hensibly, seeing both part of the group who slaughtered his fellow Jedi and the face of Commander Cody, his clone trooper companion, who shot at him. He meets this yeah. young female spice dealer. I was someone's daughter once too. Yeah, this is a fun little wink because she is played by Esther Rose McGregor, Ewan McGregor's real life oh, daughter. Oh, whoa! Her name is Tetha Grigg, a derivative of her name, and she offers him some spice. That's I got cool. A Kessel Pure glitter stem and pollution. Kessel Pure means it comes directly from the spice mines of Kessel, a location we visited in Solo, and the endpoint of the Kessel Run. Mm -hmm. Glitter stem is a form of spice off and mentioned in Star Wars lore produced from the webs of spice spiders, and Felucian means it comes from Felucia, the planet with interesting plant life where Ayla Secure was gunned down in Order 66. Yeah. Kamel Nanjiani plays Haja Estri, a con artist who pretends to be a Jedi. Notice how he wears a huge fake lightsaber out in front of his robes. Yes, it's super obvious, and that's the point, hmm. because Jedi are always supposed to hide their lightsabers beneath their robes. If he was a real Jedi, it wouldn't be out in the open like that. He gets them safe passage to the planet Corellia, which is the home planet of Han Solo that we yep. saw at the beginning of Solo. After the woman thanks him, Camille does this hilarious, <laughs> impatient, cough it up gestures with his hand. Yeah. It's all there. Oh, he didn't have to. Every credit. And then notice how he counts it coin for coin, despite pretending not to care. Obi-Wan exposes him. But in my experience, rats know more about the sewers than anyone else. Yeah, I like how in this episode we're back to seeing Blade Runner Obi-Wan from Attack of yeah. the Clones, a guy who was not afraid to explore the underworld to locate his target. They pass some more signs, some translate to SW Milk, made for Star Wars Milk, and then a red <laughs> sign for Sabacc. That yeah. Yeah. A Star Wars card game. Actually, later in this episode, you see the same sign at the bottom having a whole hand of Sabacc cards. And then even later in the episode, we see Haja playing a solitaire variant of the game. And then in this alley in purple, there's a sign for a club called The Den and another sign in green, Wine. Ben twists his beard hair as he scoops the wine. this alley. It's actually the same gesture Alec Guinness did in A New Hope. And Ewan McGregor mirrored this mm -hmm. in the final scene of Revenge of the Sith, his way of showing that he's starting to age up and transform into that era of the character. Now, this hooded man walks past Obi-Wan on the left side of screen, and yeah, he looks a lot like Mark Hamill. Hamill has huh. cameoed in these live action Disney Plus Star Wars shows before he did Maybe. voice the bartender droid yeah. in The Mandalorian. Now, if this is him, we shouldn't overthink it. Luke is not time traveling here. Star Wars has a uh, looser logic rules for cameos. Like remember, E.T. showed up in Revenge of the Sith. Ben enters this spice processing lab looking like a meth lab. Yeah. Smoothly, he pickpockets the spice from the guard as 
as he brushes past him. Ben then tussles with more guards in the corridor, including the Zabrak, and if you watch this very closely, he even though Ben is super out of shape and that's really fun to watch as he takes all these hits, it's not that his hand is just weak when he punches them. If you look he closely, stabs his horn. He cuts his hand on one of the Zabrak's horns. So yeah. I always wish we would have seen with Maul's horns. Now, last episode showed a hooded Leia revealed to actually be a decoy, and this episode keeps up that game, but in this case, it's a trap for Ben. But Ben is prepared for this. You're bleeding all over my floor. Well, everybody bleeds. Yeah, I love this line because Obi-Wan has always been around with the most visceral violence in Star Wars. His yep. scuffle with Ponda Baba, slicing Maul in half, shooting Grievous's heart out. And of He's done plenty of uh, underworld, undercover as high as missions as well in the Clone is. Wars, too. This is the first time in Star Wars we have seen characters truly high on spice. And I love this. When Obi-Wan finds Leia, he leans forward toward her in the same exact pose that matches oh, Leia's pose when asking cool. Obi-Wan to help via R2's holo recorder, even the same kind of blue lighting covering them both. I just love that we finally get to see these two characters together. A major character pairing that we've never gotten before, as the two of them never really yeah. shared a moment together in A New Hope. He says, Your father sent me. I'm here to help you. Where's the army? Yeah, the moment Kaida <laughs> mirrors Luke rescuing her in A New Hope. A little short for a stormtrooper. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Aren't you a little you hot for my sister? I mean, what? The, <laughs> the character whose armor actually shows up in the Return to the Vader's Castle comics. Worn as a disguise by Rebel Commander Lena Graf, Reva says, I found a link hmm. between him and Organa in the archives. I use the girl as bait. That link in the Jedi archives that the Inquisitors now have access to might have been Bail Organa visiting the Jedi Temple on the night of Order 66 before poor young Zet Jukasa died protecting him. Or it might have also been Obi-Wan's and Bail's Christophsis venture in Clone Wars. The Grand Inquisitor says, Whatever power you are craving, it will not change what you are. And what is that? The least of us. You came to us from the gutter. Yes, some context of why Reva has such oh, a I missed that. and why they call her Reva more often than Line. third sister. If I'm right, that that youngling we saw in the prologue was Reva, maybe after escaping the temple, she spent some time on the run, that fear leading to anger, leading to hate, leading to suffering. And, and then, then she came to them. Everyone, and out of desperation, she volunteered to hunt him down as an inquisitor. Reva defies the Grand Inquisitor, mm. though, by transmitting Obi-Wan's bounty to every bounty hunter. His mugshot reads, Wanted, Obi-Wan Kenobi, offenses high treason, reward upon capture, and I like how they used a Revenge of the Sith publicity photo of Ewan McGregor. One bounty hunter eats a giant rib with all the signs for Gungan oh. snacks around. This actually might be a Kadu rib. Kadu being the riding mounts of the Gungans of Naboo. Remember, Kadu rib was listed on the menu at the diner yeah. in the Mandalorian Season 2 finale. And you can actually get a Kadu pork rib at Disney's Galaxy's oh, Edge. So the red good. neon sign behind him reads, Swartz, maybe a reference to Lucasfilm <laughs> producer John Swartz. As Ben looks around a corner, another sign reads, Chiomo Threads. There was a Shumu Wong, hmm. a Chinese film actor in the 40s and 50s but I'm not sure if there's a connection there. Leia throws hmm. some shade at old man Ben. If anyone <laughs> asks, we're farmers from tall and you're my daughter. Granddaughter, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, love really, it in the next nine years both of them are about to hit some massive age changes now one of the bounty hunters is an lom series yep. droid like four lom who joined bosk and boba fett in the empire strikes back but according to deborah child this guy is actually named one jack leia asks i read that jedi can make things float make me float what I want to float. If you think about it, in The Last Jedi, Leia will finally pull off an impressive force-powered space float. Another pink neon yeah. sign translates to Jawa's Market. And then on the rooftop, Reva looks past a sign that reads milk. Meanwhile, Leia gets spooked. <laughs> so many Obi milk signs. Alert. Another example of Reva's chaotic evil tactics making Obi-Wan's life hell. This chase heads <clears> to the rooftops where the bounty hunters fire on Ben as Reva parkours her way over <laughs> him. Leia tries to jump force away, parkour. but falls short, losing her grip Get on the right. wire. And I love the inverse coloring of this moment. Leia in green green falling into the red, Ben's face lit red Ooh, with the green yeah. smog backdrop. And Ben finally uses the force on the series to catch her, a move that Cal Kestis actually does in Jedi yep. Fallen Order to save Prof, revealing himself as a Jedi for the first time. And by the way, that sequel game, Jedi Survivor, is set five years after Fallen yep. Order, which roughly sets it around the same time when this series I takes place. I would lose my shit if Cal pops up in Cal this. Kestis could show up on the show. The Orbish sign in this alley, by the way, translates to noodle, obviously a noodle bar, but also reflecting how Obi-Wan finally 
King uses the powers of his noodle. And later in this alley, Reba scans <laughs> Haja's noodle. But Haja saves them from oh, an okay. and points into the cargo port where an Orbesh sign reads Mach Inc. I assume Machine Incorporated. He says that shuttle will take them to the planet Mapuzo, confirming the translation of the Inquisitor table that I did from a trailer, Mapuzo being a deep cut location from the role playing game. The fact nice. that trailer footage shows that on the Inquisitor's screen means that they're going to chase them there, which is bad news. Oh, for that's cool. Help Obi Wan there. And we'll see. Maybe it's some other runaway Jedi. Maybe Cal Kestis. Maybe Ahsoka. There's quite a few of them still alive out there. The Grand Inquisitor Quinlan, turns his spinning fucking boss. Please, kidnap Please. Peter, whom we learned is named Vect Nokru. This spinning effect is one of the more lethal aspects of the Inquisitor sabers. And yes, they yeah, can use man. this to fly. Leia boss has been around. Now, come on. What now? Nothing. You just remind me of someone. Love it. She was fearless too, and stubborn. Was your friend a Jedi too? No, she was a leader. I love it. So Obi Wan compares Leia to her mother, Padme, a queen turned senator of Naboo, a leader. But he may also be thinking of his lost love, Satine. But really, what uh, I love most about this line maybe. is he answers but whether or not Padme she was a Jedi sure. with no, she was a leader, which means Jedi in his mind should not be leaders. Which makes sense. After the Clone Wars, after Order 66, Obi Wan probably feels quite a bit of regret that the Jedi got so involved in that military conflict and that they never should have been generals in the Republic military. Moses Ingram is legit creepy as Reba. Come yeah, out man. to play. <laughs> I love how the increasing red glow of her saber precedes her entrance into frame. This whole yes. moment feeling very similar to Vader playing hide and seek with Luke in Return of the Jedi. She says she wants to take him to Vader, revealing Lord Vader will be pleased. You didn't know. He's alive, Obi Wan. Anakin Skywalker is alive. So a few things here. First, I just love how Reba can sense Obi-Wan's sudden confusion upon hearing that Anakin survived. But second, how does Reba know that Vader and Anakin are the same person? This is supposed to be a secret known only to a few people, like Palpatine, Vader, Obi-Wan, Yoda. For oh, Reba it's an to easy, know, means she easy, must have some no. deeper insight into Anakin than most others do. Perhaps as a young lean, she could have idolized Anakin Skywalker, and she was able to put it together that this new <laughs> scene has given her the same kind of feels that Anakin did. I think ultimately this just gives us an insight to how smart Reba is, because after all, Thrawn was able to that Anakin and Vader were the same person based off of a specific flight maneuver that Vader did that Thrawn yeah. knew that only Anakin Skywalker could do. Reva uses her lightsaber to stab the Grand Inquisitor in the gut, but again... Now, I want to rewind. Uh, this guy, I, they, I was a little slow pausing on this one. It's, I mean, we see Anakin, we know Anakin invaded the temple. While they were escaping... Maybe she's the only one of her group that got out. She could have, for all we know, she could have seen Anakin slaughter her whole little tribe that she was trying to get out of there with. Like, if she's in there at all and she survives this thing, it's so easy for her to have seen Anakin come in and maybe even overheard, um, you know, any of the, the troopers referred to him as Lord Vader. Because by that point, he had already been Sifted, knighted <laughs> as uh, Lord Vader before, and that's what they were referring to him as. That's his call sign at this point. And this was obviously before, you know, the transition into Vader. And that's still what he goes by. Only really the troopers and anybody that knew Anakin before or was there to witness and survive it would know if she saw his face, which it's not like he was doing much to hide it. He was expecting no survivors to come out of the temple. So it's very likely she just saw him kill everybody. And you get easy to put two and two together, especially considering they're called the same thing to this day. It could be a Thrawn thing as well. You know, like noticing these little like hidden details in the way that Vader acts, operates, behaves, Maybe she could pick up on that, but I think the most obvious answer, and maybe they'll contradict it, maybe they will prove me wrong, but I think it's just very easy. If she's a survivor of the attack of the assault on the temple, she probably saw Anakin. It's as easy as that. And I see some people freak out. I was like, oh, it's breaking cannon. I was like, no, it's not. Chill out. This is the most questionable part to me, the what we're fr frozen on right now. But as we've seen many a time before with Finnick, with... Uh, Oh, damn. Why am I blanking on his name right now? Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> it's, it's a flesh wound. He's fine. He's going to be fine. They're not rewriting history. They're not going to do that. He'll just get back up. He'll be fine. 
again, the Grand Inquisitor is guaranteed to survive, considering he shows up years after this in Rebels. He might get that same kind of mod shop treatment that Thundercat gave Fennec Shand. Maybe they'll rush him to a back to tank. Either way, if Vader can survive, Immolation Grandy can survive this. Right? So, Obi-Wan, stunned to know Anakin is still alive, spirals. Are you okay? This was so well done. Especially this. Anakin. Oh, I love it. A uh, smash cut. We see the face of Hayden Christensen, his eyes now Sith red. In the back to tank, he's breathing the same sound effect of Vader's iconic breathing through his mask. So right off the bat, the first shot we see of Darth Vader on the show is not the iconic mask. It is the face of Hayden Christensen, making a promise to the viewers that Darth Vader on the show isn't just going to be James Earl Jones' voice coming through the mask. We're going to be spending a lot of time with this guy underneath the mask. Now, while the back to tank is supposed to be a regenerative healing tank that he must reside in, while not in a suit. This water doesn't look restorative in this moment. Visually, it looks like he is in boiling water, steaming with rage. And as we saw in the Book of Boba Fett, laying in these back to tanks mm. has a sensory That's a good point. meditative quality. It causes you to reflect on your unresolved issues. And that is what Vader's going through right now. And a cool little visual detail here, though it is hard to see, the gnarly scar is on his bald head, the same one on his head when Luke unmasks him at the end of Return of the Jedi. So in this moment, we do not yet know if Vader was just waking from a nightmare. Charles Soule's amazing 2017 comics Ooh, show how yeah, he experiences I love them a this lot. Visual. They are terrifying and Obi-Wan factors heavily in them. But the editing mm -hmm. at least implies that it was Obi-Wan speaking his name for the first time in 10 years that could have awakened this monster. Because this is, after all, the first time Ben has spoken the name Anakin on this series. Other characters have said it, like Owen and Bale, but not Ben. For these first two episodes, Ben has successfully resisted using the Force and letting his conscious mind drift back into the Jedi thinking. But now, that Jedi itch that the Grand Inquisitor warned of, the itch they cannot help, has got the best of Obi-Wan, and he made the mistake of finally opening his mind to his former Padawan as a living threat. And even the simplest, most forgivable thought crime has put a bullseye on him. Yes. That's all the stuff I love yes. coming out of episode two. Episode three is coming Wednesday of next yep. week. So when that drops, Tommy and I will once again be doing our Wookiee Leaks after show, covering all the big questions coming out of it, with my breakdown coming out the next day on that Thursday. And Hell the yeah. best way to support new rock stars is to check out our merch. All of these guys, grab you a shirt, grab a tea. Kenobi inspired. Check out their podcast, their breakdowns as usual, man, because this was another stellar one and yeah i think he's right on the money with that but i feel like there's like you could like i did just kind of dive a little bit deeper into how she could have known the connection between anakin and like he, he made some good points but like i i feel like it's so much more simple than that um but who knows i might be wrong i could be wrong uh, but i'm sure they'll address it i i trust deborah chow i really do and uh, this team on working on this. I mean, it's not Dave and John directly working in this one at all. They've been there. They've obviously Dave has like creative control over pretty much most of the like everything as far as I'm aware. Um, at this point, after his promotion, but you know, I, I know they're not the showrunner or anything like that. But you know, she came right off of that. You know, Mando one two. So I. I have faith in her, man. I really do. And I like the direction that we've got so far. And I've got, I like the questions that we have so far. And uh, I'm really curious to see how we expand upon it. But guys, sound of the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials down below. Follow me on each and every one of those. Before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Mandy Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Billy Vane, Yuri, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, and Robert Aguiano. Thank you guys so much. For your continued support but that's it for this video guys and i'll see you all in the next one may the force be with you always take care everybody